Picking up where we left off in the last video, we just got done looking at how the brightness contrast filter worked, and we wanna go ahead and see how some of these other filters work. So I'm gonna come over here, and I'm gonna choose the hue saturation. Now, the idea of the hue saturation is we have three sliders. Now, the first one we can ignore for right now. We'll come back to that in just one second. We'll go ahead and focus on the saturation and lightness. So the lightness slider is going to be somewhat like the brightness slider on the brightness contrast. If I increase this, we're gonna be increasing the overall lightness. Now, it's a little bit different in the sense that we're making everything more of a pastel hue instead of increasing the brightness, so to speak, like we do with the brightness slider but you can see that we can basically get things darker or lighter by adjusting the lightness. We can also come over here and choose to control the saturation. This would be the intensity of the color. So I can reduce that intensity and I can make everything feel a lot darker and a lot duller by simply modifying these two sliders. So I'm gonna hit reset. And now I wanna go ahead and focus on the hue slider. So the idea of the hue slider is that we're going to be remapping the hues from their current position of zero either to be on this side of the hue ring or on this side of the hue ring. And you can see it's basically just this guy right here mapped to a slider. So generally speaking, this tends to work best if you're making small changes. You don't tend to wanna to make huge changes with the hue. So what I'll do here is I'll just make some small changes and you can see I'm sort of trending everything more towards maybe a reddish hue or something like that by slightly moving in this direction. And I could come over here and I can move in the opposite direction and you can see I'm trending everything more towards a greenish hue. And of course, then we could come in here and we could say, all right, maybe I want to increase the saturation, but decrease the brightness until I get exactly the type of background that I want. And you can see that this ends up with a slightly different feeling to the background. And again, this is the reason why we would use these types of filters is to modify the way in which the painting is coming together so that we can put the focus where we want it to be and reduce focus in areas that maybe we didn't paint as well as we would like to, or maybe we got a slightly wrong color in an area. And this is a really great set of tools for doing exactly those types of things. I'm gonna hit reset so that we get back to the original and you can see how big of a difference that was. I'm gonna go ahead and hit cancel on this one. Now, the next one down is going to be color balance. And the idea of color balance is that this is going to be sort of a selective color modifier. And it's kind of a little bit difficult to explain without showing. So we're just gonna go ahead and start showing. Now, the first thing that I wanna point out to you is that we're currently set to preserve luminosity. What that means is that the values of this will not change as I'm changing the sliders. If you turn off preserve luminosity, as you're changing the sliders, you will see the value shift and you may or may not want that. So it's a good idea to try both before you settle on a final result. The other thing I wanna point out to you is that we are currently affecting the midtones of this background. If we wanted to affect the shadows instead, we could choose shadows, or if we wanted to affect the highlights, we would choose highlights. So maybe in this one, I wanna go ahead and affect the shadows so that we're over here focusing on these tones here. Now what I can do is I can choose the bias of each of the main three component colors. So you can see we have red to cyan, green to magenta, and blue to yellow. And by changing the position of the slider from zero, we can bias that towards one extreme or the other. So in this case, maybe what I want is more red in those shadows. So I'll go ahead and pull this over and you can see how we're affecting the shadows. However, the midtones and the light colors are not being adjusted, only the shadows because that's what we currently have selected. I could also come over here and I could say, well, maybe what I wanna do is I wanna cut back that red just slightly. So I'll add a little bit of green in there and you can see how that cuts that red down a little bit. And then I could say, well, you know what? I want this to be a bit more blue. So I can affect the blue. And again, we're only affecting the shadows. We're not affecting the midtones or the highlights. So then I could come over here and I could say, I want to affect the midtones now. And maybe what I want with the midtones is I want them to be more cyan. And maybe I also want them to be more green. And maybe I also want them to be more yellow. So you can see that we can modify the overall color of the background very quickly by simply choosing whether we, or not we want to adjust the shadows, midtones, highlights, and then how we want to adjust the bias for each one of those. And again, if you wanna see what happens without preserved luminosity on, just turn that on and off and you can see what that looks like. Personally, I always leave it on, but there may be times when it gives you an effect that you like, so it's a good idea to try it before you settle on something. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hit reset, and then I'm gonna hit cancel, and you can see how useful that is for dialing in your color. And the next one down is going to be color filter. Now this one's a lot simpler. The idea here is that we're mimicking a photographic filter. So we're taking a color and we're applying it based on a strength slider. So if I increase the strength all the way up, you're gonna see that we're applying that color filter at a strength of 100 
or preserving the luminosity. If I turn off preserve luminosity, you can see how that color filter would apply based on sort of modifying the tones of the colors. And you would have to understand how photographic filters work. These are the type of filters that you would screw on in front of the lens. So it would filter all the light that's coming in. And the reason why it works is because it's filtering certain light and allowing other light to come through. And so basically it tints everything, but it tints everything and also changes the values at the same time. By turning on preserve luminosity, it doesn't do that. Instead, it leaves the values where they are and it just tints everything. So again, we would adjust the strength slider until we get the effect that we want. And you can see that at a very low strength, this can be very effective for tinting your backgrounds. Now, we can also click here on the color chip itself and choose something from the system color picker. Now, it tends to work best if you're choosing something that is not gonna be terribly saturated. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose something like this pink, and you can see how this goes. I'm gonna go ahead and increase that intensity. Then maybe I'll choose something like this blue over here. You can see how that goes. And I'll choose something like this green here. Say, okay, you can see how that goes. Maybe I'd increase the strength on that one a bit. Then I could also choose something like this yellow here. See how that goes. And then I could choose something like this red here. And you see how that goes. So again, very simple. You know, it's, it's sort of a two option thing. You choose the color, you choose the strength, and you just allow it to do its thing. But it can be very, very helpful for pushing everything back and sort of unifying the entirety of that layer color-wise. So that's something that I use quite a bit when it comes to sort of unifying things if I haven't been as careful as I should be about putting all the colors together as well as I could. So again, I'm gonna hit reset and I'm gonna hit cancel so we can see the original. And the final one that we wanna look at here in this video is going to be colorize. So if I choose colorize, it's gonna look very similar to the hue saturation in the sense that we have a hue and we have a saturation but what we have here is a strength slider instead. So we don't have a lightness. We're primarily focusing on the intensity of this, very much like when we did with the other filter here. Let me just hit cancel, come over here to filter and color filter. And you can see there's a strength slider here as well. So it's basically the same idea as the hue saturation, but taking the color filters strength slider in place of the lightness slider. So what I first wanna do is I wanna choose a hue and you can see that we can just pick a hue that's gonna be sort of like the color filter. And then we're gonna come over here and we're going to choose the saturation. So we can increase or decrease the saturation and then we can increase or decrease the strength. And you can see that sort of mixes the original colors back in and we can just move that until we get precisely the arrangement of colors. And this is something that if color filter isn't working right, then the colorize is also a good option. Although I tend to go with the color filter first. And then if that doesn't work the way that I want it to work, then I come to colorize. The reason why is because I find that the color filter tends to unify things a little bit better than the colorize does, but it's just a personal preference. I'm gonna hit reset and cancel. So again, I just wanna point out to you that these guys right here, the hue saturation, color balance, color filter, and colorize are all sort of related and they can all be used for dialing in your colors, particularly in layers where maybe you haven't been as good at putting the colors together as you could have been and you wanna sort of bring everything together or you kinda of wanna move everything in one direction or another.